if somebody wanted to do an integrity cleanse or attempt mm-hmm. what you did, but yeah. with the lessons learned, maybe they are not willing to go kind of full throttle. Yeah. How would you suggest they do that? Uh, because most people listening, myself included, have, have never attempted something like this. And just as mm. a quick humorous sidebar, I'll say if, if people want to read something very funny, there's an article, it's an old article from Esquire called, I Think You're Fat by a friend of mine, AJ Jacobs. And it's about <laughs> his experiments with rad- radical <laughs> candor. <laughs> and his wife was like, how do I look at this? And he's like, I think you're fat. And it, oh you God. can imagine it, it didn't go super well. Oh, goodness. He learned a lot, but ultimately it was, it was a pretty tough experiment. So what would you suggest to people? And what is an integrity cleanse? And what's the kind of like white belt, blue belt, black belt version, or however you would like to answer that? Let's do the white belt first. Take a smaller time period. I said a year take three days a week and you don't have to say everything you think, (laughs) but you do have to be aware when you're saying something that you don't believe. So have a little journal or something so that you can, when you lie to someone else to, and most lies are told to smooth social interactions. For sure. (laughs) Nobody says you look fat. (laughs) 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 So, Just note in a little book, okay, I said this, but what did I really, what was I actually thinking? So somebody said to me, oh, we'd love you to come out and visit. And I said, sure, sometime. But (laughs) but you write down, okay, that was a lie. I would rather die a thousand times than go to stay with these people. Whatever. Write the truth down in your little notebook for yourself. That's the path of the truth. Everything else is the path of not there. It's just mushy. And I I wrote a whole book on this based on the Divine Comedy because Dante starts that book just saying, in the middle of my life, I found myself just wandering through this horrible, dark wilderness, and I had no idea how I got there or where to go because I'd lost the true path. And then he shows how you find the true path. So most of us are doing that, and the way you find the true path is to start writing down the things that are true after you've said the things that are not true. Just do that for three days. That's the white belt. Okay. Blue belt, hmm, take a month and have a friend where you speak the whole truth to another person, even if it's a therapist or a 12-step group or something. You want to go black belt, all in. Hmm. This is what I try to do. No lying ever, but you don't have to say much. Like, consider if what you have to say is an improvement upon silence. Mute for a month. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, you end up finding out that you say it if it's true, kind, and useful. Very few things are all three. Don't lie even with your actions or with your facial expression or anything. Don't eat a bite of food you don't want. That's a lie. Like, I, I get really... I like to be tough on these things. Like I used to run 100 miles a week. Now I will be like, I will never do anything false. And it's fun Mm. and rigorous. It is rigorous, I would imagine. (laughs) And offensive. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So quick tactical question for people who want to maybe get somewhere between the blue and black. They're going to make an attempt at fewer lies, more truth. So not just becoming aware of it, but actually changing some behavior. Yeah. You mentioned offensive. You mentioned rigorous. Somebody who is being truthful is going to say no Mm -hmm. in some form a lot more than someone who's being untruthful. A lot more. What are some of your go-to phrases or language that you like to use Mm. that is not the equivalent of I think you're fat? Maybe it is. (laughs) In terms of saying no to the many things that would otherwise consume your time and your life? Most people, when they want to say no and they don't know how to say it, will try to become victim and say, I can't because of this, this, and this, which is horrible because the person always thinks of a way out of those things. <laughs> I love this quote from Julius Caesar, Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, where he plans, his wife says, don't go to the, the Senate. I had a horrible nightmare. You're going to get stabbed. So the guy comes to get him. And he says, go tell the council, Caesar will not come. 
that I cannot is false, that I dare not, falser still. No, go tell the council, Caesar will not come. Boom! Like, that is my model. (laughs) And there have been really good studies that show that to get out of depression, one study had control group, a group that had therapy, a group that had meds, and a group that did nothing but eliminate the words I can't and I have to from their responses. Instead, they had to say, I choose not to, I choose to, I will, I won't. And they came out of their depression faster than any of the other groups. (laughs) Every verbal thing we say that is not true hurts Mm -hmm. our bodies, hurts our psyches, and leads us to anxiety and depression. So in that case, keep a book that says, You'll have to deal with the people who don't like you saying, no, I've lost a lot of friends this way. Friends that perhaps needed losing. But (laughs) I always say just think. Know what you really know about something. Okay. Feel what you really feel. Say what you really mean, at least to yourself in your notebook, and then do what you really want. And that sounds so self-serving, but in fact, it's quite stoical. I know you follow the Stoics and the hedonists, they were weirdly similar. Like they'll do what is true because it's more felicitous to them in every way. So have a notebook where you write down what you would do if you were being really honest. And then after a while, once you know what you're dealing with, start to become that person in the way you actually conduct your life. And as you make mistakes and as you don't keep your commitments, Forgive yourself. Because one of the things I found is that it's never true to hate yourself or to condemn yourself. It's never true. What do you mean by that? We are such little monkeys, you know? I just I just got back from Costa Rica and we had a fabulous monkey encounter. And they had this fear expression. (gasps) <gasps> and, and they were afraid of so many things. And I just thought, we are this far from them. All we've got is shoes to differentiate us from them. <laughs> and we're terrified of everything all the time. And most of us are really doing our best. And we have all kinds of socialization weirdness. And we re- our brains get reconditioned and rewired for fear. If you're not in integrity and you didn't manage to pull it off and be honest in a hard situation, kindness and gentleness are the truth. And that's, I actually wrote a book that's coming out next year after I wrote The Way of Integrity because I was so tough on myself in the integrity thing and it was making people anxious. And there's a level beyond just telling the truth and it is called compassion and it's truer. 